If you are not watching this in high quality already, please click the link Watch in High Quality at the right bottom of this video. Hello and welcome to the OpenSplice DDS hands-on webcast series. My name is Ranier Torenbeek, I'm a senior solutions architect with Prism Tech, and I'll be giving you a demonstration of the OpenSplice DDS Tuner tool. The Tuner is a very versatile tool for dynamically inspecting what exactly is going on in the OpenSplice backbone. It allows you to explore all active applications and their DDS entities with their QoS quality of service settings. This exploration includes the defined topics and their corresponding data types. Also, the tool allows you to interact with the middleware by dynamically creating readers and writers for any available topic. This video will show you how to do all these things, so let's get started quickly. First of all, I start the OpenSplice backbone using OSPL start. And after that, the tuner is started using the command OSPLTUN for OSPL tuner. I need to connect the tool to the DDS domain. This is done using the file connect command. With OpenSplice, the DDS domain is identified by a URI, a uniform resource identifier, that points to the configuration file. Using browse, I can select the configuration file, and we see in this demo that I just used the default configuration, which can be found in the installation directory of OpenSplice, etc config. I select ospl.xml. We immediately see a bunch of topics appear in the window. On the top, you might recognize several built-in topics as they are defined by the DDS specification. DCPS participant, publication, subscription, DCPS topic. These are currently available in the middleware. There is also a set of internal topics used by our durability service. We will ignore them for now and we will focus on the built-in topics. What we can do is inspect, for example, the DCPS publication topic. Right-clicking, display entity, shows more details about this topic. A dialog pops up with several tabs. The first one contains some general information about this topic, like its name, whether or not it's enabled, its key list, and the type name. The second tab shows the status of the topic. How often have several events occurred? The third one is more interesting. It contains all the QoS settings. I'm maximizing all. It shows all QoS settings relevant for this topic and their corresponding values. For example, this DCPS publication topic has a durability kind of transient attached. Also, reliability is reliable, history keep last. Well, all the different settings that are applicable for topics are shown in this window. Some of these can be changed. For example, the latency budget can be set to a different value. Others are, by definition, not changeable. Those are shown in italic. The next tab shows us the data type associated with this topic. And we see here in HTML, complete overview of the data type. First, there are two helper structs, structs which are embedded in the topic itself, and then finally, the actual publication info type. This is exactly the same type as defined by the OMG standard, but this information you see here was dynamically deduced by, by the tuner tool by connecting to the domain. This is actually quite a big topic, lots of information. Any topic that you create, even if it's done by your application, can be dynamically inspected by the tool. Finally, a statistics tab, but there's no statistics available for this entity. This dialog already quite gives you quite some information, like for example, was the data type the way I expected it to be, or were the QS settings correctly set? Apart from that, you can also inspect who has been subscribing to this publication topic or publishing. If you select Display Entity Relations recursively, you will get information about all entities that are connected to this topic. For example, there is a data reader available for this topic. 
There is a partition in which this topic was published, the built-in partition, and there is a writer available. Zooming into this writer, well, the writer belongs to a publisher called built-in publisher, and it belongs in a participant called built-in participant. You can inspect the relationships for every entity in this window. Currently we are looking at a view which is top-down starting at the topic entities. We can also change this into a participant view where we start at the top with all the different participants available. There's a built-in participant, there's an open supplies tuner of course, and that's us, and three services active, the durability service, the network service, and the supplies daemon. If you are running applications, your application will show up here as well. Again, using the display entity relations recursively, you can explore all the different subscribers, readers, writers available in every application. So the splice daemon, which is one of our internal daemons, has created three data readers. It's actually listening to all the different built-in topics. Another view starts at the partition level where you can get an impression of all the different partitions that are currently available in the middleware. If you don't want to right click every time for display entities, you can also automatically display entity relations for any entity in your window. Any of the entities shown in the tuner can be explored using right click display entity. For example, the data reader here. It's interesting to see what kind of QS settings it has and to see if it matches your expectation. A nice feature is the dynamic creation of readers and writers. By right-clicking on this topic, DCPS Heartbeat here, I can create a reader-writer pair. Let's do it in an existing partition. I select the built-in partition. Um, I'm using default readers and writer QoSs. I can even change that, but for now I'll stick with the defaults. And I'll click on OK to create the reader. Now we see a dialog that starts that helps us or that allows us to inspect all the different heartbeat topics that are received by my dynamically created reader. So I can click on this arrow to show the next sample in my data reader. And indeed it contains one sample. Click again, it contains another sample. For a more interactive overview I can do the start monitoring which regularly polls for available samples. And we see here that somebody is apparently publishing heartbeats with a regular pace. I can stop monitoring again, and um, we can see that every item in this list has its own list of attributes as well. If you want a more convenient overview of every single item, we can select the single tab where we see exactly one heartbeat uh, sample with all its values and over here on the top we see all its corresponding sample information. The sample information is as specified by the OMG specification so you can even dynamically inspect the corresponding metadata to every sample. The green fields indicate that these are actual key values which make the heartbeat instance unique. When my re reader was created, I also created a writer, which we can see in the third tab. This tab allows us to dynamically ins insert data into the system as well. So I can show you this using a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 to make it easily recognizable. Write the data and then look in the list to see what has happened wait for the next sample, and there it is, one, two, three, four, five, the sample that we just wrote. So the tuner gives you a very easy way to dynamically join the middleware, see what's going on, and also influence what's going on. That's all I wanted to show for today. Thank you for watching this video. For more advanced tuner features, please inspect the tuner manual that comes with every OpenSplice DDS distribution.